Namaste and welcome to Geeta's Kitchen. Today I'll be showing you how to make a traditional home style South Indian meal. And uh, many of you in my videos, in the comments, you have asked me, uh, Madam, which brand of oil do you use? What oil do you use? So I, I have always shown you for certain recipes, we use thin oil, that is sesame oil, and curd based gravies like more curd or more kutte. Generally, I use coconut oil and then for other things, maybe like frying or other just sauteing, I might use groundnut oil. So, we use a combination of oils for pickles, especially also again, thin oil we use. If we make something like a puli or a gojo or a ratta karbu or kara karbu, there again, thin oil is a must. To get the authentic flavor, today we will be using this Purva brand of oils. This is the coconut oil, groundnut oil and their sesame or thill oil. All of us are aware of the benefits of using cold pressed oils. And these oils are all cold pressed oils which retain their nutritive value because the high heat is not used, no chemicals are used and all the raw materials are procured from organic uh, farmers only. The first item we will make a pachadi or a raita using this amla which is in season now very healthy amla also known as nellikai this is a kerala style recipe known as nellikai arachi kalaki see this uh, recipe gets its, gets its name from the process used arachi means to grind kalaki is to mix so nellikai is the amla nellika arachi kalaki let's see how we make it first we will Boil some water and we will add these uh, amlas or Indian gooseberries into it till it gets cooked. Okay, just check if it has cooked. Now we can switch this off and drain out the cooked amlas. So don't throw away this water. We can use this for making rasam. Allow it to cool. Just open it out and discard the seeds. See we have removed the seeds. Now take these amla pieces in your mixi jar and add one green chilli to it. We are going to grind this using curd, thick curd. Also add a little bit of salt. Add fresh grated coconut while grinding. See we have ground it into a thick paste like this using only curd not adding any water at all. Add a small piece of grated ginger to it. Now we have to do, uh, mix it with more curd. I am just adding the curd to this mixy jar itself so that we can remove out all the ground paste. And mix it well. So, arachi kalaki. You have ground it and now you have mixed it well with the curd. Very tasty and nutritious too at the same time. For the tempering, because it's a curd based uh, pachadi, we we'll use coconut oil. So, you can take about a teaspoon of coconut oil. Now add some mustard seeds, a little bit of hing and curry leaves to this. Pour it on top of this. Nelika arachi kalaki is now ready. See just as I am pouring this coconut oil it gives an awesome aroma. This recipe for Nellika Arachi Kalaki was shared uh, many months ago by one of our viewers, uh, Tampan. Thank you, Tampan. Next item, we will make a poriel or a dry sabji using these cluster beans. I have washed and chopped it fine. 
these are cluster beams so when you take it you just remove the top edge and a little bit from the bottom also and then chop it finely for making this i am going to use the cold pressed groundnut oil or peanut oil just take about a tablespoon of oil add some mustard seeds urad dal one dry red chilli a little bit of hing curry leaves and then add in this washed and drained kottavarangai or cluster beans add a pinch of turmeric powder salt to taste we'll just sprinkle a little bit of water cover it and cook till done let's just check this see the vegetable is nearly cooked just wait till all the water is absorbed that's why i say just only sprinkle water as much as required so that it is absorbed there it is done now we we'll switch it off and then we'll add some fresh grated coconut to this so our simple and healthy kotta uh, varanga tega potta curry or our cluster beans dry sabji is now ready see organic cold pressed peanut or groundnut oil is a natural source of several essential vitamins and minerals that is what we have used in making this kotta varanga poriyal or cluster bean sabji make an interesting brinjal fry or a katrika madakal for this again i'll take a tablespoon of this peanut oil add some mustard seeds urad dal jeera or cumin seeds chana dal king curry leaves then i have taken one large onion and sliced it stir fry the onion here i have taken some brinjal and sliced them also always keep the brinjal in water till you are ready to cook then it will not discolor add some turmeric powder salt 1 teaspoon of dhania powder mix everything well and cover it and allow it to cook till the brinjals are done so while the brinjals are cooking we will make a masala for this here i have about 2 tablespoons of peanuts i have taken about half a teaspoon of oil we'll just first fry these peanuts when the peanuts are done drain them out from the oil and uh, keep it aside now in the same pan just with the remaining oil add about 4 dry red chillies lightly roast them they should not become black just lightly roast them over a low flame switch it off and take it into your blender jar to these roasted chillies i am adding 2 tablespoons of fresh grated coconut we'll dry grind it into a powder see this is done and ready now let's have a look at the brinjal just we'll fry it for another 5 minutes more Now you can remove the lid and cook it on an open flame for just another five minutes. See the brinjals are well fried now. Now we'll add this uh, powder of 
grated coconut and uh, red chilli and mix it well switch it off and finally add in these uh, roasted peanuts they add a lovely crunch to this uh, brinjal fry try it and see you'll really enjoy the taste perfectly delicious brinjal fry with the crispy crunchy ground nuts now ready the next item on our menu is a tasty kara koyambu in which we are going to add these charlets or sambar onions as they are called and some yellow pumpkin first i have soaked a large lemon size piece of tamarind in water right at the beginning before starting all the preparation now we'll just squeeze it out and extract the juice making the kara kolambu we should always use sesame oil or till oil also known as nallenna in tamil so add about 2 to 3 tablespoons we all know that sesame oil has got very many health benefits and uh, the nutrients like uh, zinc uh, magnesium calcium and iron are all retained because of this uh, organic sesame seeds and the cold pressed method of extracting the oil add some mustard seeds some methi seeds chana dal two dry red chillies this is some hing and curry leaves next add in these uh, shallots peel shallots stir fry them and also this chopped yellow pumpkin stir fry them together to this i am adding some haldi powder wait till the shallots are lightly fried in the oil then i'm adding dhania powder and chili powder mix everything and just allow the vegetables to cook for a while next you can also add in some chopped tomatoes and cook them till the tomatoes become soft and mushy those who like to add garlic can add it along with the shallots when you are frying them today i am not adding see the tomatoes have become nice and soft now we can add in this tamarind extract we have extracted it with about 2 uh, cups of water next we'll add in the salt now cook it over a low to medium flame till the vegetables are cooked and this boils well and thickens see it has been boiling well now just check if the vegetable is well cooked at this stage i like to add a teaspoon of sambar powder then it retains the flavor continue cooking for just another 5 minutes more till it thickens well you want a slightly thicker consistency see perfectly it is boiling now you can add a small piece of jaggery i'm adding very little because the pumpkin already adds sweetness and so do the tomatoes don't add too much just enough to balance the taste and you have the lovely consistency and you can see that the oil is also being released on top at this stage we can switch it off see i am just transferring it into my serving bowl lovely kara kolambu with perfect color and consistency we have just one final item 
rasam which is really welcome in these winter days right in the beginning of the video you would have noticed that i had the pressure cooker in which i cooked both rice and dal together so this way we can cook both rice and dal at one go our dal tuvar dal is cooked well i'm just taking about uh, two ladles of this cooked dal we are going to make now lemon rasam so here this is the water in which we had boiled the amlas right in the beginning and i had reserved it remember so we will use this water also for the rasam here i have one green chili a small piece of ginger so the spiciness just comes from this green chili and ginger and one ripe tomato finely chopped to this we we'll add some water. We'll keep this to boil. Just add a pinch of haldi powder and some salt to taste. Now to this we will add some curry leaves. Also some finely chopped coriander leaves. When it starts boiling add this cooked tuvar dal. See the rasam is again boiling well. Now we will just top it up with more water. See the rasam is frothing up. Now we can switch this off. After switching off the stove, add lemon juice. I have taken about 1 tablespoon of lemon juice. As always for rasam we will do the tempering with ghee. Add a teaspoon of ghee. Add some mustard seeds and jeera a little bit of hing pour this on top of the rasam. our tasty tangy lemon rasam is also ready now we are ready to serve out our uh, traditional home style lunch this is the nellikai arachi kalaki or the amla raita. You can make it a little more dilute if you like but because it will flow on the leaf I have kept it like this. Next the cluster beans poriyal or kottavaranga curry. Brinjal fry that is katrika vadakal. This is a pumpkin and shallot parenka and chinna vengayam. Kara Kwambi Our piping hot lemon rasam This is some plain cooked dal which we had reserved before adding to the rasam I have just added a little bit of salt and a pinch of hing to it I don't mix the salt first itself because then we won't remember if you have added salt or not so I just mix it only finally. Now add this kalate parupu or plain dal here and some steaming hot rice. Add some ghee on the rice. When you eat the first course of dal mixed with rice, mix it with the ghee. Then the second course you mix this karakarma with the rice. At that time you can add uh, some uh, sesame oil to it. It will taste very good. Next as a third course we have with this uh, lemon rasam or this can just be uh, you know you can drink it like a soup also and a south Indian meal is never complete without curd so I have there some curd and this is some traditional pickle this is mahali karanga I'll find out the English name for it I don't remember it immediately. Apart from this, they have many more products. If you visit their website, you can see all of them. They have some organic turmeric powder and here there are some organic black pepper also. And the good thing is they are absolutely transparent. You can visit their processing unit at any time and also their organic farms 
and uh, see for yourself how they are manufacturing all these uh, products where they are retaining the nutritive value by using the organic raw materials and also not going for any chemical refining or any heating they just use simple filtering also and we get the complete nutritional benefits of using these oils uh, you can visit their website www.purvanaturals.com uh, you can use the coupon code geeta2022 i will put it in the description box as also complete details about their website and contact address and so on you can check it out so thank you for watching this video please subscribe to geeta's kitchen enjoy this uh, lovely traditional south indian meal share it with your family and friends we meet you again in another interesting video from geeta's kitchen thank you